Well, welcome back to the Global Business Report. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has unveiled plans uh, targeted at boosting commodity exports in the country. This is contained in the circular just published by the Apex Bank on Friday, 14th June, in line with the approval by the Bankers Committee at its 343rd uh, meeting. Uh, this is for commencement of the EFI to complement government's efforts to foster growth in the non oil sector of the economy. Under the initiative, the focal commodities for value chain development uh, will be cocoa, cashew, ham oil, shea butter, and sesame seed. And joining us to explain further is a CEO of Carry Assets, Johnson Chico. It's good to have you with us. My pleasure. Yeah. Now let's take a look at uh, this EFI. What are your expectations on the CBN's export facilitation initiatives? I think what the CBN wants to do is provide one, some level of credit okay. uh, lending um, to those who are into those lines of production. Mm -hmm. And I want, also want to believe they go beyond that of um, providing um, credit support to those who are exporting those products, but particularly backward integration to those who are producing those products. Uh, CBN has already, had, already has a lot of policies to support palm oil, cocoa, yeah. uh, and a couple of these uh, cash, uh, cash crops. Um, so what CBN wants to do is now, you know, we already have an export uh, uh, credit facility All right. um, whereby the cent central bank gives incentive to those who are into export. But beyond that, I think the key thing is to increase the production of these items mm -hmm. because you not just want to encourage those who are exporting it too, but you need to basically increase the production so as to make available higher quantity of these products for export purposes. Yeah. And that's when they have to go back to address the issue of uh, outgrowers, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And then when you get uh, to address the issue of ad growers, you have to talk of uh, do you have to provide credit to, in do, uh, to what you call uh, to commercial agriculture, mm -hmm. agriculturists who are producing, who are into these products? Yeah. Or do you have to provide credit to the small sign mm -hmm. holders who are producing in smaller mm -hmm. quantity mm -hmm. and then bring them under the um, commercial agriculture credit scheme mm -hmm. or under any of the schemes that Central, Central Bank has yeah. for support of... Um, farming uh, activities. All right. Very good. Now, do you think boosting commodity exports in the non-oil sector of the economy is the way to go? I, I, I want to believe it's a stopgap. Mm -hmm. And uh, why do I say it's a stopgap? As a country, we should be talking of value create, value addition. Okay. We should be talking of beneficiation. Yeah. That is improving the value chain of the products we can produce here, yeah. uh, the raw materials. Uh, if you want to uh, focus on exporting crude palm oil, yeah or cocoa, crude cocoa, or any or shea butter, any of these products, mm -hmm. that for me will be at best a medium, short to medium term measure. The ultimate objective of the country should be how to improve the value chain of these commodities so mm -hmm. that we're actually exporting the finest, finest mm -hmm. finished products. Yeah. Um, reality is that when you export raw materials, you get minimal value for whatever you export. Yeah. And then those who add value to those products and export them back to you, actually they want to trap the higher value in that value chain. So for me, the key thing is that, okay, let's even increase the volume, which is why I'm talking of, mm -hmm. not just encouraging export of these products, but encouraging local production of these products, mm -hmm. increasing the volume of the products we can produce locally. Take for instance the issue of palm oil. Mm -hmm. See, we do not have enough production today. Mm -hmm. The same thing with cocoa. Today, Ivory Coast is the largest producer of cocoa. We're not even coming, we're not even taught. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is that we need to produce higher volume of these products. Secondly, we need to also create, build the industries that will produce this, turn these commodities mm -hmm. into finished products. The priority should be that we should focus on how do we add value to whatever we can produce mm -hmm. economically, or where we have competitive advantage, mm -hmm. and not just necessarily focusing on yeah. just exporting the raw material. And there's, there's the issue of the infrastructural deficiency. <laughs> in our manufacturing sector as well. So how does the EFI complement this? You know, you've already highlighted the issue of uh, adding that value chain to it, but that is the main issue here. Even if it's uh, having one uh, product of the comparative advantage, as it were, but if you don't address the, the power issues, the industry is moving out to other places and you still have the same issues there. Okay, let me tell you, Nidhi, the way I would mm. have approached it if I were government All right. is to have an overarching economic plan okay. or economic blueprint. Right. If you want to have an economic blueprint, every other thing would be, the, every other sub strategy or sub plan would be mm. developed to fit into the overall strategy. Take, for instance, what we're talking about. All right. If you look at the fact that we want to start, uh, we want to increase the production of mm -hmm. these cash crops, 
for export purpose. Yeah. And I said the primary objective should not only be for export purpose. It could, I suppose it could be a short-term measure. Indeed. But long-term measure should be to produce and create values. Yeah. For you to create value, so if you have an overall economic pol policy, you have to have an industrial policy that fits into the economic mm -hmm. policy. That industrial policy will say, what sec in industrial sectors can we promote locally? Mm -hmm. What industrial sectors do we have competitive advantage in terms of input material? So the uh, industry that process cocoa products, yeah palm oil products will fit into those industries you can focus on. Mm -hmm. Then next thing is that what do we do? What infrastructural need do we have to build mm -hmm. to support those industries? Then that will even go back as much as the quality of labor, the, your educational system. Mm -hmm. That you have to look at what educational system will support the kind of economy we want to create in the next 30 years. Yeah. Are we going to create an economy that is very strong in manufacturing so you need technical skills? So you need make sure you have Technical schools that will develop those skills mm -hmm. that will be required in the, uh, in the labor market for those industries you want to grow. Yeah. Do you want to build an, a service oriented industry? Mm -hmm. you now need to be, have an education system that will develop the competencies that you need. Do you want to be a high end technological institution, uh, country? You want to export technological products? Yeah. Then your education system must be built on STEM and then should build the skills that we require to support that. That's what some of the countries have done. If you look at countries like Japan, Singapore, China, these countries defined where they wanted, how they wanted to position their, their country economically. And they decided where they want to compete as service industry, as the IT technology industry, or as manufacturing hubs. Mm. China has developed a concept of being a manufacturing hub. And I remember one of the things that um, uh, Tom Cook, the MD of, uh, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call them? The, the telephone company. Yes, yeah. all right. Uh, uh, well. <laughs> Okay, we could, we could go beyond that. <laughs> so what he said is that, yep. that when people talk of technical competence, yep. and they say that China is a low-tech, uh, technical, uh, a, a country with mm. low labor costs, and mm. they wonder where they're coming from. That for him, uh, in the Apple, I mean the MD of Apple, yep. that for them, what matters is that China has the right technical competencies. That the kind of technical competence they need for programmers is that, that you can have if you invite all the people who have that competence in America, they will fit, yeah. into, fit into a room. Yeah. But you will need several stadia to fit in the people with that competence in China. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, China has developed an educational system that is built to meet the labor requirement of industry that are in China. So for me, if you have an override, overriding economic plan, economic blueprint, yeah. then you talk of what kind of input materials you want to build mm -hmm. in the country, yeah. what kind of industrial industry are we going to promote, what infrastructural needs would those industry require to uh, exist? Yeah. What even, including your tax regime. Yeah. Okay, what kind of tax regime will incentivize people to come into those uh, industrial sectors? Until you have that, then you are going to be working in silos. So you have a policy that is targeting one aspect, but it's only mirrored to a particular aspect. Then you are not looking at the overall economy, yeah. how to broaden the economy and make the economy. We, we must ask ourselves as a, as a people, mm. how do we want to position this economy? My simple suggestion would be that if you have a, a country with a large, huge population, yeah. you must have a strong industrial base Indeed. that will absorb the huge number of young people who are ready to work. Then you, have, you must also have a reasonable level of service industry, yeah. high-tech industry, high-knowledge-based industry. But key thing is that you must have a strong Indeed. manufacturing base. Otherwise, you are going to be dealing with the issues of unemployment. Mm -hmm. What small countries have done, like countries like uh, United Arab Emirates, particularly Dubai, yeah. they looked at the fact that we are very small population. Yeah. So we can't be a manufacturing hub, but we can be a service uh, hub because with few people, you can provide services. And contrary to that, like China and India, realize that they have huge population and there must be an economic structure that will create jobs for those large population. Very good. Now, we, we've had economic plans in the past, but it's one thing to have these plans, but it's another to actually stick to it. And you have successive governments coming in with their own versions of how to uh, improve uh, the economy, as it were. But be that as it may, do you think this initiative uh, will improve competitiveness, competitiveness rather, with imports, as it were? Uh, f with imports, mm -hmm. you know, because you're not doing beneficiation, you're not adding value. Exactly. So you will not provide com any competitiveness with imports. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's only when you start producing, which is why I've talked about you need to look at your industrial policy, yeah. you need to look at how you support industry, including the infrastructure you need to build. China has one of the, some of the best highways in the world. 
they have some of the fastest uh, rail lines in the world mm -hmm. because they have built infrastructure to meet their purpose of being a manufacturing hub. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So for us to be competitive, we must also build efficient infrastructure, power supply that must be available at a relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. uh, transport infrastructure, the appropriate regime of tariffs that would discourage imports, but not necessarily set barriers as to create yeah. um, room for uh, uh, poor quality mm -hmm. products. Because you can also create such barrier mm -hmm. that you actually, you're actually subsidizing inefficiency. So you must have, an over, like I use the word, overarching economic policy. You must have a clear economic policy that you have sub-segments of that economic policy that are fit into a whole. Yeah. Uh, so for us to become competitive, it's not just enough that we're exporting. You can't even be talking of being competitive, we're exporting raw materials. Mm -hmm. The key thing that can we produce, turn these raw materials into finished goods at prices or at costs that will be cheaper than what similar products imported in the country will yeah. land at. Mm -hmm. For you to achieve that, you must have the appropriate infrastructure. Indeed. You must have the appropriate tariff and tax regime. You must have the right quality of labor at appropriate cost. So these are, and then you must have your funding must be available at reasonable prices. Mm -hmm. There are several factors that have to come into place. I mentioned the issue of funding, That's availability, right. and cost. You have to issue of infrastructure, power infrastructure, transport infrastructure. You have to issue of labor. Um, and it's only when these things come together you can say, okay, we can produce effi effectively at costs yeah. that are competitive to what obtains elsewhere in the world. Okay. But specifically, do you think it can discourage smuggling and dumping of banned uh, products into Nigeria? You see, smuggling, uh, I always tell people about smuggling, and yeah. we, sometimes we tend to misconceive the concept of smuggling. Yeah. Smuggling happens only if a product is demanded in your country, but there is no channel to bring it in. Mm or it is brought in at exorbitantly uh, at exorbitant price because there are tariffs imposed yeah. on those products and therefore people look for alternative ways to bring those products at cheaper cost so if there's no demand for any product there won't be smuggling of that product into your economy if the product can be efficiently and effectively brought in legally All right. if nobody will smuggle those products mm -hmm. in it's only when you have imposed tariffs on those products that you cannot produce for which there's demand in your local environment mm -hmm. that smugglers can now consider that as an attractive uh, business line right. to, to engage in. All right, so George Chuku, I'd like to thank you a lot for your presence here, and thanks for your thoughts on those issues. Good to have you.